Stockton became home to thousands escaping the violence in Cambodia. Savannah Kurtz is one of them. My son just said, Mom, write your story. I say, I can't, son, because when I, when I start writing, I have a nightmare at night and I cry. I can't, it's too painful, so I don't even talk about it. As a refugee, she came to Stockton in 1984 because of the large population of Cambodians, also known as Khmer. In 1960, the Communist Party of Cambodia, popularly known as Khmer Rouge, was formed. By the early 1970s, the Khmer Rouge was able to take control of large parts of Cambodia. Now, unfortunately, the Khmer Rouge really evolved into an extremely xenophobic and classist and, uh, in popular memory, genocidal regime. And between 1975 and 1980, there was a, you know, what, what's known as the Cambodian genocide. The eyes of the Khmer Rouge, those who were a potential threat like the educated, became the enemy and were killed. My family, we have a lot of people, a hundred, so 30 died, they're all educated. Because my family come from educated family, you know, my uncle is uh, the professor, my, my aunt, so they killed both of them. Savannah hid the fact she was going to college. In Cambodia, did you have to pretend that I you were not I do not know anything. To survive, she was forced to marry her husband at 20 years old. I almost killed, but because I fought to marry my husband, who uh, who not a Khmer Rouge, but he he is a low low level or he he low level or he like poor, so they, they put him in high. Everyone poor, they promote them. They're not educated, they promote them. That's why a lot of people kill. While pregnant, Savannah, her husband, and her other child crossed the border to Thailand by trading gold for a guide to help them escape. We run and walk, run and walk, you know. While well, you're months pregnant? Yes. No shoe. No shoes? Yeah, like in the forest. And we do not know because we trust the guy, you know, people, the guy us. By the early 1980s, the U.S. put resources into a refugee resettlement program that brought people like Savannah and her family from Thailand to the United States. That program identified Stockton as one of several cities that a large Southeast Asian community would be able to settle successfully. When we came, we didn't speak English. You know, many which already even know their own language, they didn't know how to read and write. When they arrived in Stockton, many Khmer lived in these apartments called Park Village. She says the buildings and neighborhood were dangerous. They came here, they thought that here is safe for the kid. They brought them because of the, of the health expectation that they're going to be safe and they can have a new life, a new home, and high education for the kid. The apartments became in such disrepair, the city had planned to condemn the complex. Savannah became the voice to advocate for better living conditions. So when they need to the court, I speak broken English, but I don't care. As long as my, 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 the word I say, it, 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 when the message is, is go to that person. After the apartment complex went under foreclosure, Savannah, along with 35 other refugee families, were able to purchase it from the Housing and Urban Development for $1 in 1993 and learned how to fix it up. But housing wasn't their only hardship. Not only were the refugees still processing the trauma of leaving the Khmer Rouge, they were impacted by another tragedy in Stockton, the Cleveland school shootings. And in 1989, unfortunately, a white supremacist um, who harbored a lot of ill will and resentment towards Asian American communities and, and diaspora communities, you know, uh, drove past Cleveland School and opened fire. And um, it was really one of the first major mass school shootings in United States history. Five students between the ages of six and nine were killed. Four were Kamai. This was the tipping point for Kamai and Stockton. 35 refugee families, including Savannah, came together to start Asian Pacific Self-Development and Residential Association to help people facing economic hardships, trauma, and even offer programs for adults and kids. The organization, also known as Apsara, has expanded in 30 years and offers educational and health classes, as well as teen and senior programs. They serve 2,500 people just in the Stockton area. Today, Stockton has one of the largest populations of Khmer in the country, but some of their stories are untold. It's painful, especially for the older generations who remember the war. I say, when you lost one person live here, 
you lost one story. Each individual has their own story. Now the younger generations are striving for a brighter future. Some are entrepreneurs, educators, and lifelong advocates. They share a commitment to one another and a place that gave them and their families a second chance.